Hello everyone and welcome back to the Silicon Sounds YouTube channel where we are about audio for the rest of us. High quality audio components that hit well above their price range with respect to both performance and build quality. Today we're going to take a look at, in my opinion, one of the best examples of this and that is the HZ Sound Heart Mirror in-ear monitor. First, before we get started, let's take a quick look at the comprehensive uh, accessories that accompany the heart mirror. The HZ Sound Heart Mirror comes with a very comprehensive set of accessories. Shown here are one full set, small, medium, large, of translucent soft silicone tips, another set of black tips with colored inserts, very reminiscent of Sony tips, a pair of foam tips, a package of uh, nozzle filters with the tool to remove them. What is not shown is the casing and the carrying pouch that it comes with. All in all, very impressive for the price. Now moving on to the heart mirror itself. The heart mirror is a single dynamic driver, uses a 10 millimeter carbon nanotube or nanometer dynamic driver. It has an impedance of 32 ohms and a sensitivity of 106 decibels. It uses a two pin 0.78 millimeter connector. So uh, including or adding uh, third party cables as I've done here is quite easy to do. The HG Sound Heart Mirror, like many emerging earphones, sounds great or will sound okay. Um, and I really have to qualify this with respect to the heart mirror when driven by your typical cell phone or DAP. The problem is, uh, I'm going to put this out there, the heart mirror really, really scales quite a lot with added power, uh, so much so that I would not recommend, uh, at least if you want to really hear what it sounds like, what, which I will be describing in this video, if you want to hear all those sound qualities, you're not going to get it on a uh, lower end cell phone unless you're using one of those. For example, uh, the LG phones with the quad DAC and the higher output, you really won't um, allow the heart mirror to shine to its best potential. It does require some sort of amplification. Here we have the iffy hip DAC, which it plays quite well with the heart mirror, but then again, this is more powerful than your average um, cell phone. Uh, it's not to say that they're hard to drive, just that they scale very well, but unfortunately at the bottom of that scale, they do sound somewhat unremarkable. In, note weight is light. Uh, if not driven correctly, uh, imaging definitely suffers, uh, and so on. With respect to build quality, uh, this company may not be known to many, but the build quality is quite is quite good. I mean, it's very good. Uh, it houses a single dynamic driver and is beautiful made with a shiny metal reflective shell. It is metal, of course. Construction is of apparent high quality as well. Uh, one of the things that sets apart the HC Sound product from much of its competitors in its price range, I should say, apart from its sound, um, as you've seen in the little clip before this, the impressive set of accessories that come with it. But let's move on really quickly to the sound. Here of the heart mirror, how I like to listen to it, it has BGVP08 um, um, bass tips on it or tips. And I believe this cable is a Luna Shops uh, 7N OCC 2 meter. I like uh, longer cables and one of the few places I found that will actually allow you to specify the length. Um, great cable that works very synergistically, very well with the heart mirror. Bass. Let's talk about bass. The heart mirror is definitely not a bass heads earphone. And this will be more apparent if they're not powered properly. When powered properly, they definitely do have bass, and the bass that is there is quite impressive, if not very powerful. It doesn't mean that it's lacking in that department. Instead of over-prominent bass, the heart mirror's low end is more of a neutral presentation with a slight elevation in the deep sub-bass. Bass speed and articulation and texture clarity are very impressive. Uh, in particular in this price range, approximately 60 US dollars, very impressive. On Wayman Tisdale's track, Circumstance, one of my favorite uh, smooth uh, jazz artists, for example, the bass line is not only clearly heard, but the texture also comes through. 
the texture of the bass. You can tell uh, different bass uh, guitars, you can tell different things, a thumping bass and you still have a bass line, uh, very easy to tell apart. Um, speed and clarity is a common characteristic of the heart mirror throughout its frequency range, by the way, not just the bass. Uh, it takes very kindly to EQ, which is interesting. Some um, IEMs in lower price ranges, uh, when you start to EQ, maybe pump the bass up a little bit. Distortion is the result as the driver in there is pretty much operating at its outer limit. Uh, the heart mirror, no. The heart mirror can take EQ very well. Uh, impressive levels of speed and clarity. In particular, detail retrieval. From top to bottom, the heart mirror is very good at detail retrieval. Uh, little nuances that you have missed in songs before. Uh, it's one of those IEMs we'll talk about later that will make you revisit your your music collection. Let's talk about the mids. Mids on the whole, on the heart mirror, they have great speed and clarity, impressive detail retrieval while being slightly recessed. They are slightly recessed. The singers will be set back a little bit further back in the scene than maybe some others, for example, um, the K-Bear Believe which is about two and a half times the price, but very impressive performer as well. Uh, the musical balance um, is more towards the bright and neutral without sounding too cold or analytical, but at times the heart mirror can stray into that analytical uh, range, uh, and then that may not be for everybody. Warmth is not something you would call the heart mirror. It has a certain amount of warmth, but definitely it's more towards the neutral. On Massive Attacks, uh, Protection, fantastic song. Tracy Thorne's uh, vocals are haunting and just beautiful to listen to. Very, very clear and engaging. Uh, I find that's one of the tracks where the vocals can really hit you, but only when they're represented, represented well. And the Heart Mirror does that. Makes you want to hit repeat, actually. Uh, very clear and engaging. Anita Baker, probably one of my top three female singers of all time. Um, her... Very impressive track, Love You to the Letter. Incredible vocals, great arrangement. The Heart Mirror allowed me to get lost in the great music. Uh, Ronnie Jordan's Vanson Place, 12 AM. One of the top tracks I use for, there's a lot of things going on in the track, in particular in the high end, brush cymbals, uh, sound effects, and all this other thing, plus a nicely somewhat muted bass line. And the Heart Mirror really allows the space and all the elements to really play around in their own layers. That's another thing it's good at is layer separation. Now, I'm not going to say it's at the same level of layer separation as the K-Bear Believe, but with respect to detail retrieval, that might be something else altogether. Let's talk about the treble. High end is very clear and distinct. In fact, it is high end prominent. Sibilance is thankfully kept to a bare minimum. With well-recorded music, it's never an issue. And with, even with poorly recorded music, the heart mirror is, uh, considering how some people might call it bright, it's actually very forgiving in that regard, even though the details that it can extract from the music are, is quite impressive. What really stands out is the detail and clarity. I previously felt that the BQEYZ KC2, seen here, and we'll talk about some comparisons in a minute, was a champion with that, but the heart mirror definitely improves on the KC2 while sounding more natural in the process. Timbre on the heart mirror is actually quite good, uh, irrespective of its um, tuning, which is bright neutral. Uh, the Timbre is, is very pleasing, and maybe that's why it's such an engaging listen. Uh, detail retrieval is also better due to its more general, generally more natural presentation and beats out my previous champs, which are the KC2 and the TRNBA5 in that regard. Uh, once again, Ronnie Jordan's Vance in Place 12 AM has lots of great cymbal work, uh, for example, and the tone and texture of the different elements really were pleasingly distinct. On some, if you listen to that track, in particular the first minute or so, there's so many different elements going on, and in many other earphones that I've listened to, they seem to all meld in together, but not with the heart mirror. Every, in, every element, is distinct and separate from each other. You can tell them apart. It's really quite impressive. Imaging and soundstage. The heart mirror is capable of good imaging with easy to follow spatial cues and proper placement in that, uh, we'll call it that environment. That being said, uh, 
when not adequately powered, the heart mirror is very uninvolving with respect to imaging. It's not very good. It's flat. Once again, combined with flat note weight, not as impressive. But when powered correctly, uh, the heart mirror really shines. In fact, its imaging is actually quite good. Uh, given its layer separation, uh, that just enhances the imaging even more uh, with more than height and depth, but uh, quite good in its price range and beyond. Um, one thing that I really find is impressive, um, at least what impresses me a lot with um, IMs in any price range, is the ability to handle transients, the leading and trailing edge of transients. The heart mirror is a transient monster when it comes to leading edge. The trailing edge sometimes lingers on um, a little bit strangely too long, depending on uh, if it's, for example, a very high symbol crash and whatnot. Uh, that might be due to the elevated presence in the trouble region, but it is not something that takes away from the quality or the, the sound of the music. It's, it's still great, um, but with respect to um, transit attacks, the heart mirror is, is quite, quite impressive. While it has, uh, imaging is not top notch, uh, with, there are, might be one or two more that might do better, uh, but uh, many of them don't have, in particular in this price range, they don't have the layer separation to really bring that imaging home, whatever they do uh, present. So let's talk about strengths and weaknesses. The heart mirror strength lays in, really lays in its natural tone, detailed retrieval, clarity and speed. For it really, for its asking price, it's still top of its game. I mean, a lot of new IEMs have come out, and we're going to detail a few over here coming out, and they, none of them sound the same, and none of them sound even remotely close to the heart mirror, uh, for better or for worse. Uh, but the whole package, the heart mirror, seems to be the more engaging. I just find I keep coming back to it. Weakness would be, some would say, the base um, quantity, which will affect its impact. Clarity is great, but in terms of quantity, it, sometimes you may feel that it's lacking or you're asking for more, or you just want to dig deeper and listen, what's the baseline saying? But uh, again, proper amplification, proper tips. Tip rolling on the heart mirror is critical. Uh, it's critical at every every earphone but with the heart mirror it's super critical there are a number of earphones that i have the heart mirror um the smabat uh, nco where tip rolling is an ongoing thing even if you had it for a month two months uh, once you find the proper tips the heart mirror can really shine even with respect to bass which is very pleasing uh, some may say it's under based or under but the quality is is there absolutely let's talk about some comparisons uh, real quick, talk about the BQ EYZ KC2. People have been in this game for a while. You can tell, look how strong the magnets are. Um, this really needs no introduction. This, in my opinion, is a go-to purchase for anyone, especially if you're getting into the game of uh, portable audio, this rabbit hole that you're jumping into. This is a definite must have. KC2 brings to it overall clarity, speed, uh, articulation. When it's compared directly to the heart mirror, there are some, and I'm doing this ad hoc, I'm just doing this uh, out of my head. Um, when it comes to the troubled clarity and detail retrieval, I would say that the heart mirror is slightly ahead of the KC2. When it comes to base quantity, the KC2 will win. Based clarity and detail, it's really a toss-up. Although I think the heart mirror plays deeper than the KC2, uh, with respect to mid-bass, it, it's quite a toss-up with respect to speed and articulation and detail retrieval, the texture of the bass. Either or, I own both and I will not get rid of either. Both of these are a must-have. If you're looking for a KC2, grab them before they're out of production. Absolutely. TRN TA1. Released to some fanfare, the TRN TA1 is a hybrid, which is really uh, not really a fair comparison, some might say, between this and the heart mirror. The heart mirror is slightly more expensive. Um, when it comes to bass, uh, quality, and quantity, 
I'm actually going to give the nod to the TA1. The heart mirror is excellent, fast, articulate, very textured base. The TA1 has that as well with more base impact. There could be a little bit more even on the TA1 because the base is so pleasing uh, that sometimes you just want to ask for more. But the base impact, the clarity, the detail are fantastic. Mid-range, um, for lower mids, it's a toss-up between the two, I would say. But as you go into upper mids, lower treble, I actually give it to the heart mirror. Now, the TA1 uses a uh, balance armature, a quality balance armature. Now, I'm not sure about my TA1, but I found the highs have a tendency to be splashy, and which I don't find in the heart mirror. Um, I just wish it wasn't so because the TA1 has so much promise. It's really something special. But the heart mirror, when it comes from mids, um, upper mids, all the way up to the treble, lower treble, upper treble, the heart, mid, the heart mirror will take the crown from the TA1. CCA CSN. Uh, this is the darling of many reviewers lately. Um, very inexpensive. I am. Um, one thing I didn't mention about the heart mirror was comfort. Uh, look at the difference in size. It's quite... Uh, look at that. David, Goliath. David, Goliath. Does David slay Goliath? Yes, David does. The CCA CSN, very good IM for the price. Exceptionally smooth in its presentation. If somewhat a little bit more laid back than the heart mirror. A little bit more warmth to the presentation. But when it comes to details from top to bottom, it's bested immediately by the heart mirror. Uh, when it comes to engaging quality, it's timbre and pacing and whatnot. The heart mirror just uh, walks all over to the CSN. Now, I'm not... I'm not saying the CSN is bad for the price of 20 something dollars, 25, 26. I'm not sure exactly. Uh, it's a great purchase. Um, very smooth, very easy to listen to for long listening sessions. Uh, this is a great choice. Now, with respect to fitment, this is a large IEM. It's large, bulky, it's got an interesting shape, sticks out of your ear. And with respect to that, the heart mirror does win. Um, I have no issues with the CCA CSN. But when it comes to long listening sessions, you definitely know it's always there. With the heart mirror, because of its size, it can really disappear into your ear. Still, great IEM. If you're in that price range, good purchase. It is less expensive than the heart mirror, and it is an, a hybrid, by the way. But I just feel that um, save your money and get the heart mirror. Here is now the interesting one. Wizard HE01. The HE01... There you go. Is jewelry. It's basically um, an earphone that's built like fine jewelry. Beautiful build quality, um, at least the looks. It is significantly lighted in the heart mirror. It does share one aspect to the heart mirror in that it's a single DD, a single dynamic driver. Now let's talk about comparisons. The Wizard HE01 is a fantastic earphone for its price which is almost the same as the heart mirror maybe a little bit ten dollars or five to ten dollars more expensive the he01 top to bottom i i, I don't want to use the word it, it's just um what's the word i'm looking for <laughs> it's very difficult uh, the he01 just does well from top to bottom there's no area of the spectrum in particular of the mids where the he01 falls down. Uh, base output is clearly uh, stronger than the heart mirror. Uh, that being said, uh, the base quality is also very, very good, but the heart mirror plays deeper, if not as prominent or not as strong. Uh, in terms of speed, they're both very good. I give the slightest edge to the heart mirror in that regard. When it comes to mid-range, I'm going to have to give the HE01 the nod. Um, but just barely. Uh, we're talking about it's not as recessed, the HE01, although it is slightly recessed in a way. It uh, has a very clear and expressive mid-range, very well done. Um, so is the heart mirror, but the note weight on the wizard is better than the heart mirror in the mid-range. Uh, the notes are slightly heavier, thicker, but still just as detailed. So the HE01, when it comes to mid-range, 
uh, very good competitor to Heart Mirror and maybe edges slightly ahead. Now, when it comes to the high frequencies, here we go. Very comparable. The Wizard has a beautiful treble range. Uh, very expressive, very clean. Detail retrieval, though, uh, at the end of the day, detail retrieval goes to the Heart Mirror. Uh, expressiveness and detail, I, I can't fault either. I don't want you to think they sound the same. They do not. They sound different. Uh, but the Wizard and the Heart Mirror both bring to you that element of engagement that is so hard for other IEMs to get. Do they want you to, do you sit down and just want to play track after track after track and after two, three hours realize, wow, I've just had two or three hours of pure enjoyment listening to all this music. Well, both of these can do that. Um, which do I choose? One over the other? Hmm. Uh, let me put it to you like this. The Wizard takes less effort to sound good. Easier to drive. So if you're talking about a DAP, uh, low-end DAP or head for, or um, or even a cell phone, uh, I'd probably get the Wizard HE01. If you have more heavy-duty uh, amplification and not necessarily just, this is not what I call heavy-duty, the uh, hip DAC. I do have other amplification, the uh, topping A50S that's much more powerful. I would say go for the heart mirror. So let's just put it to you like that. If your amplification strained, go for the wizard. If you have more powerful amplification, go for the heart mirror. Sorry, can't help you there. I'm keeping both of them. Let's just put it to you like that. I keep both of them. So at the end, in conclusion, and I have my notes here, I consider the heart mirror to be one of my best of a small but growing number of earphones in my collection. Um, I actually own these. None of these are sent to me from sponsors. I own, I've spent my own money on all of them. What you hear at this site is what I hear. Nothing else. No, not influenced by any manufacturers or anything else. Um, at its price point, it's an outstanding value, the heart mirror, and can easily compete with products costing a few times more than its overly reasonable asking price. It is really reasonable to get one of these in terms of asking price. If you're thinking about it and you don't mind the neutral, bright neutral signature, please get one. Give it adequate clean power combined with some quality time tip and cable rolling. And the heart mirror will reward the listener with a satisfying audio experience. The best thing that I can say about the HC Sound heart mirror is that I found an earphone and setup that allows me to get lost in the music. And isn't that what it's all about? I want to thank you again for uh, sitting through this video, Silicon Sounds. Please like, subscribe, tell others about us. We're just starting out and uh, we'd love to see you back. Comments in the comments section and have a great day.